What's going on, people? Mike C Town here with another episode of Records and Ramblings. Before we get into the records, let's do a little bit of rambling. So this video is going to be sponsored by Vinyl Monkey. I've talked about them before. They're a really cool vinyl subscription service that you can sign up for. They do six month and full year service. Uh, they specialize in breakthrough artists, so no average run-of-the-mill stuff that you'll hear on the radio. These are special artists that they really want to shed some light on. Everything is shipped in this really nice sturdy packaging so you don't have to worry about the punk ass postman messing up your records. Alright, so yeah, so the record that they sent me for this month is Moses Sumney Aromanticism. Guys, this record is absolutely incredible. Like, I feel like if you take Nina Simone and mix her with Antony and the Johnsons and mix her... I don't even know what else. I don't even really know many acts that I can compare this to. Like, it's experimental indie pop with a really cool R&B twist to it. Um, all I know is this album is seriously gorgeous. It's dark. It's sad. It's beautiful. There's, there's just so much heartache in this album that's expressed flawlessly um like i said i think it's a mixture of anti the johnson's with nina simone but i feel like if you if you dig stuff like arca or perfume genius um or maybe even solange i feel like you might be able to get into this and i'm gonna tell you right now if i'd heard this record last year i have no doubts that this would have ended up on my best of the year list it's really that good it comes with this really nice booklet here. Uh, I'm not going to flip through all of it, but, you know, some really nice pictures, some lyrics, that kind of thing. And as with all Vinyl Monkey releases, they have these nice lithographs inside. Records on Black won't bother showing you that, but it does have this nice printed inner sleeve. So, yeah, I can't speak highly enough about this album, and this is the beauty of signing up to vinyl services like this is occasionally I end up running across something that I'd never heard before that I really actually love and this record guys is one that I'm seriously infatuated with right now. I'm actually surprised more people aren't talking about this record. It's 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 weird. The next record I want to show you this is Captain Jazz and I'm really not going to try to pronounce that. It's some weird thing. All right. But uh, I was talking about these guys this past weekend, and I realized that I hadn't shown this record yet. But for those of you that don't know, Captain Jazz was a great indie rock emo band from Chicago that was active during like the early to mid 90s. Um, they're one of those bands that I thought was okay back in the day. I saw them a few times, didn't really pay that much attention. But I grew to love them a lot more as I got older. And if you listen to a lot of the emo stuff that came out like mid 90s and after, these guys influenced so many of them that it's not even funny. But this uh, record, it compiles all of their out-of-print stuff. So their full length, uh, the seven inches that they did. But yeah, these guys went on to be in Promise Ring, uh, American Football, Joan of Arc. All great fans. Records on Black won't bother showing you that. But it does have this really nice booklet here with a lot of words for you to read about this fantastic band. Uh, I saw these guys at Riot Fest a few months back when I was in Chicago, and it was an absolutely insane live show. Pretty much just like a how I remember them from back in the day. This was pressed a while ago, and then it was uh, completely sold out, and it was repressed. I don't know if there was a limitation for this version, but, uh, but yeah, mine came completely free. Fucked. I don't know if you can see that, but splits all at the top. But, you know, it happens. The dude offered to give me my money back, but I think I'd gotten such a great price on it, I was just like, screw it. Um, anyways, next record I'm going to show you. This is Lana Del Rey, Born to Die. So, uh, Michael Laura was talking about Lana Del Rey on one of his videos recently, and I realized I hadn't shown any of my Lana Del Rey records. And uh, this is the first record I got by her, and it's a record that I was listening to recently. But, funny enough, it's actually my least favorite Lana Del Rey record. As much as I love her music, uh, when she first came out, I didn't care for her stuff at all because the stuff I heard was the more hip-hop tinge stuff, and that's the shit that I really don't like from her. Like, it reminds me of that, that Lord chick who I can't stand 
her music. Her music uh, makes me feel very nauseated. Um, but yeah, I like uh, Lana's more ethereal dream pop stuff. Um, yeah, her hip hop flavored stuff is just fucking bad news. Records on Black won't bother showing you that, but it does come with this really nice printed insert here with lyrics and then this totally adorable picture of Lana. Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I don't think she got great until her follow up record, which was Ultra Violence, which is far less hip hop tinged. Um, there are some good songs on here, though. I don't want to shit on the whole record. Uh, Born to Die is a great song. Blue Jeans, uh, Video Games, uh, Dark Paradise is really good. Summertime Sadness, of course, is really good. So, yeah, there's some good stuff on here. She's playing here next month, and uh, I think I'm I i think I'm going to go. I think I'm going to go. So, Michael, Laura, if you're watching, hopefully I will see you there. Next record I'm going to show you, this is Earth and Pillars with Pillars 1. Um, yeah. I don't remember how I found out about these guys. I think it was just like a random YouTube suggestion that popped up. But uh, I was so glad that I discovered them because this record is seriously fantastic. It's great atmospheric black metal in the vein of like Paysage Diver or even Yuvia. Um, this is another one of those bands that I think should be a whole lot bigger than they actually are. Like I seriously cannot figure out why people are not completely gushing over them the way they gush over everything else. Comes with this really nice booklet here, lyrics, stuff like that. And the record's on like a really nice white vinyl. I don't remember uh, what that's limited to or if it's limited at all. But yeah, this is a fairly recent discovery for me, maybe a few months back. But uh, I, I still need to grab their first album, which I believe is called Earth One. Um, or that, those might be just eyes. It might be pillar eye and earth eye, but it seems like one would make a lot more sense. Anyways, and the last record I'm going to show in this edition of Records and Ramblings. This is my favorite record of the bunch. Oh man, this is Anthrax, Fistful of Metal uh, with Armed and Dangerous added on. And what this is, is this is a limited edition triple 10 inch. Guys, this is so damn cool. Look how it opens like that. Look at all that cool stuff in there. And then, of course, uh, let me flip it around. You have the back there. Look at that vinyl, man. How amazingly cool is that? So let me talk for just a minute about this album, guys. Um, This is probably going to sound weird. This is like an unpopular opinion, as, as the kids like to say these days. But this is actually my favorite Anthrax album, Fistful of Metal. Um, I, I've been a big fan of Anthrax since probably 8th uh, grade, maybe ninth grade, because I heard their collaboration with Public Enemy when they did Bring the Noise. And that was actually one of the first songs that I learned on guitar in like 8th or ninth grade. From there I got uh, Attack of the Killer Bees, then I got Persistence of Time. But it was this album that absolutely floored me. I don't know what it was back then, but it just... It stuck in my ear, man. It was just so thrashy. And and Neil Turbin's vocals were just so great. But everything about this, the musicianship, everything was just so good. And Metal Thrashing Mad is probably my all-time favorite Anthrax song, man. I got my foot pinned to the floor. And you can feel the engine roar. I got thunder in my head. I'm Metal Thrashing Mad. Yeah! Soldiers of Metal, another one that's just such a great song. Pounding away, tearing through flesh. Soldiers of Metal, fight to the death. Yeah, there's just uh, everything on here. The, even the cover of 18 is just so good, man. Howling Furies. Just, yeah, this is just a fantastic album, and I'm just stoked to have this. I definitely got this when I was at Riot Fest. Uh, shout out to Smart Punk Records. I bought it from them. But I don't know if you can still get this or if it's kind of pricey these days. But if you like Anthrax, man, dude, you have to get this. This is such a cool thing. Yeah, Armed and Dangerous, I don't really listen to that often. I got it back then, but I was just like, eh, whatever, meh. But Fistful of Metal, great songs, great riffs, great vocal performances. It's just, it's a fantastic album, guys. So yes, that's going to do it for this edition of Records and Ramblings. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. And as usual, thank you for living, thank you for loving, thank you for being you. And I'll see you guys next time. All right? Peace, bitch.
bitches.